Hello and welcome to Computer Class. My name is Dave and today we're talking about the types of cameras in videography. So before we talk about the types of cameras, we have to establish what are the pieces that make up a camera. And the first part that makes up a camera is called the body. Now the body section of the camera is where you attach everything to it. It usually contains a, a screen, a viewfinder, something you look through to take your video. Uh, it has buttons, it, it has a slot for storage medium like an SD card or an external drive. And it's kind of where you could attach your rig or anything else you might have in the videography department onto it. It's, it's the base of the camera. The second part is the lens. It's a device that focuses the light rays into an image pickup such as an imaging chip, which is the next one. And the lens allows you to focus. Um, it also allows, it has these aperture blades that allow uh, light, uh, the amount of light coming in. And when that light comes down the chute of the lens, it then smashes into the imaging chip, which is in the back. And the imaging chip has um, these little tube-like things all over it, tons of them, millions of them. and when the light fills up some of those tubes in certain ways, it then records that and then produces an image as a result. And, and the imaging chip is the third thing here. That's what I just talked about. That is an incredibly important part to the camera because it really is how we get the actual image that's produced. Okay. Now lenses are kind of, to go back to that one, they're kind of a complicated thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link down a video. This is a video from Think Media down in the description, and you check that out. He's all, talking about all about the camera lens basics, and you can learn great things from him, so I'll link that down for you. Also, this one is about how to utilize camera lenses and how to utilize different types of, of um, and, and why you would pick out a certain camera lens for a certain shot in your video from a company called Studio Binder. They make great products, so go check that out. I'll link it down in the description as well. There are more parts, though, that could be added onto the camera. Lots of parts, actually, uh, when it comes to videography. Specifically, a really key one is a microphone. And this is because when it comes to videography, 50% of the video is the actual um, taking of the video on the camera, but the other 50% is going to be the audio. So people usually don't watch videos with bad audio, and they don't usually watch videos with bad uh, picture quality either. So you have to kind of balance the two. So finding a good microphone is a good, uh, is a very good thing. A microphone is an instrument for converting sound waves into electrical energy variations, which may then be amplified, transmitted, or recorded. Now the camera has built-in audio in the actual camera, but it's, it's usually very terrible. And usually what you'll do is in your editing software, you will try to match up the audio that you've either recorded separately or um, the audio that you have from your actual microphone that's plugged in. Um, and it may you may only choose to take the audio from the microphone that you have plugged in. But if you do both, it can be used to match up the audio. That being said, um, there are different styles of microphone connections. And some microphones allow you to literally use XLR connectors. It's a style of electrical connector primarily found in professional audio, video, and stage lighting equipment. The connectors are circular in design, and uh, they have between three to seven pins, uh, usually three. Um, and there are some microphones, uh, specifically one that I use uh, called the K2M mic on my Sony Alpha 7 III, uh, that actually the mic itself has an XLR out that is then plugged into the system that's then plugged into the hot shoe on the top of the camera. That microphone uh, is an XLR microphone, which tends to be better quality. There are also uh, microphones that are a little bit smaller connection. I think it's a, an eighth inch jack, if I'm not mistaken. I could be saying that wrong. Um, but that's another one that you see on the screen there, the Rhodes mic. And there's a smaller connection you would plug into the headphone jack of the camera and be able to record audio that way. Both are good solutions uh, for small videography um, shoots. However, you do tend to get better quality out of an XLR microphone as a general rule. Moving on to the types of video cameras. Obviously, we have to start here. If we're going to talk about types of video cameras, the smartphone. Now, they take HD video and sometimes even 4K video. Um, but there is limitations 
to the quality of things when it comes to an imaging chip that is that small on a tiny device such as a phone. Uh, that being said, I have been highly surprised in recent years with how far phones have come, and they do take great videos, but oftentimes not good audio. And if you get a microphone that can clip onto your camera, you can a lot of times produce a great video with just a phone. And even some YouTubers have done um, some incredible videos with just a phone. But that being said, it does have its limitations, and people do look to other forms of, of cameras in videography uh, to get things done. Now, YouTube enthusiasts, recording family moments and events, this is things that this is okay for, but you move up a little bit more into the professional world, and this camera goes completely out of uh, the limelight. The next step we have is a consumer camera, things like the GoPro, the Sony Handycam, AX5, uh, 534K, again, all the way from $200 to $1,500. Uh, smaller imaging chips, fewer manual controls, no XLR inputs. You're stuck kind of with the audio that's into the camera itself. They're more for um, somebody wants to just get a family moment, um, or if you want to live stream, or if you want to stream something as a streamer, they have fixed lenses. You can't change the lens out, and that's the biggest disadvantage to them. But nonetheless, they're great cameras when you're starting out. And if you're on a fixed budget, maybe you only have 500 bucks, it's a great camera to pick up, and it can do some great video. Up next, we have prosumer cameras, something like the Panasonic P2HD, a uh, little more professional grade. You might see this in a... a maybe an auditorium somewhere doing the live stream. Um, the cost is 1500 to about 10,000, has XLR inputs, medium to large imaging chips, um, interchangeable lenses, so that's nice. Oftentimes though, you will, you will keep the lens on it that it has, uh, has a viewfinder, has those different things to really produce professional video in a studio environment, okay? And at times, take out and shoot a video if you need it. Professional cameras then, something uh, of the AJPX 5000, they're highly priced, 10,000 to 50,000, typically larger in size and very heavy, uh, shoulder mounted, XLR inputs, interchangeable lenses, large imaging tips. You might see one of these cameras out and about as someone is uh, recording the news, um, definitely in very high budget, high end um, news type settings where people are filming and doing live stream for those type of things. So at a really high price point and a decent budget there. Okay, definitely a very nice camera. And then we have super chip cameras. And these are more cameras like the Sony PMWF3, RED cameras, Panasonic uh, cameras. All of those that are up in this upper echelon are used to shoot movies. And I think RED specifically um, is, is a very well-known brand that people use. Um, that being said, Blackmagic has its, has its spot. Sony has its spot. Um, but anyway, mid-range, around the $6,000 to $20,000. So these are more the type of cameras you would see someone filming the Avengers Age of Ultron on or something like that, a professional done movie or TV show. Very large imaging chips, interchangeable lenses, so many options for clipping things on and off. Just an incredible, expensive camera for people that are shooting professional videography. And then, I know, it's like we've changed all in category. And I would say this is the best place to start if you're someone looking to get into videography, and it's the DSLR camera the digital single lens reflex camera, something like Canon's EOS 70D, Sony's Alpha series, and on and on and on. Panasonic has a series as for the GH series. Um, low to mid-range price, 12,000 to, uh, 1,200 to 3,000. No XLR inputs unless you get something to clip in the hot shoe at the top like I just talked about. Very large imaging chips. And again, if you remember correctly, to get a hold of a decent imaging chip back here with the super chip cameras, I mean, you're paying lots of money, but if you look at the price of a DSLR, you get a very large imaging chip for a fairly low cost. And that's what makes these cameras so enticing to people to buy. And a lot of times they're very versatile and can also be used to take pictures, where something like this would be 
usually just used for videography. Um, but this you could do both. Uh, if you needed your thumbnail as well, you could also take a picture with it. What's nice is the amount of lenses that are available to these cameras and they're interchangeable as well, okay? DSLR has some limitations. Um, they are still photo cameras and that tends to limit them in some ways for videography, okay? Um, they're not going to be as good as a super cheap camera, obviously, um, because you're not paying the premium that's being paid. The XLR inputs and having to put attachments and, and often connect all these devices to it to make a rig to get the DSLR to have XLR inputs and have professional miking is somewhat of annoyance, but, you know, is something that you nonetheless have to deal with. DSLR has a limited recording time usually, as do all cameras, but specifically if you set it to high settings, a small SD card is gonna have, it's gonna fill up very quickly. Um, whereas some of these other cameras that we just talked about may have the ability to literally slide hard drives into them and you can obviously store a whole lot more data on a hard drive um, than you would be able to do with a DSLR camera as a result. All right, this is going to be talking about some things that have to do with videography and starting out, it has to do with music rights. Um, and so when you take videos and you do things, whether or not that's acceptable or not. Um, and then this video, and I'll link that also down in the description below, video frame rates or FPS. And it kind of explains a little bit about um, cameras that are faster or slower when taking this and what's the difference and how to differentiate all of those, okay? And then lastly, this is a great video on an 8K camera, which is really awesome. Like, why would you ever need to shoot things in 8K from Linus Tech Tips? Uh, you probably heard of them. And um, that's just an insane thing that I thought was pretty cool. So I'll link all of that down in the description. Again, hopefully you learned something today about the types of cameras. And uh, you continue to learn as you become a videographer. Hopefully you've liked the video, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.